go live. Perfect. Hit start. Uh, yep, you ready? Yo, Yo, what's going on? It's Icy Jones right here with Hot Seat with Icy Jones on Hot7025FM.com. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'm super excited. Today is my first show going live on the station. Oh my goodness, what a day it is to be alive in Las Vegas, Nevada. We downtown in fabulous Las Vegas on Fremont Street. What else can I say? What better place to be? I got my guest in the building, Eddie with Good Fruits Hat Co. What's happening, man? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm wonderful, bro. Oh, What's man. going on, man? I'm just chilling, man. Thanks, just... Thankful to be here. I appreciate you. Yeah? I appreciate you, brother. No doubt. Absolutely, man. So let's start out by saying where are you from, Eddie? Uh, born and raised in San Antonio, Texas. Moved to Northern California where I met my beautiful bride. Oh. Um, and then we moved out here about 15, 4th of July weekend, 2003. So about, you know, a little, coming up on 16 years we've been out here. So it's home now. We love it. Okay, definitely. If you're tuning in right now, uh, you are listening to Hot Seat with Icy Jones. I'm about to get into this good interview with my partner, Eddie. He's the owner of Good Fruits Hat Company, correct? Absolutely. So tell me about this Good Fruits Hat Company and why I should get some clothing from you. <laughs> well, first off, I hope that you will get it because you like it, you think it's dope. But okay. um, how it came to be was just, I mean, over over the years, as a as a man, as a husband, as a father, you know, you kind of go through things and... I usually lean on the Bible for answers and whatnot when I can't do it on my own strength. So okay. a lot of the verses and whatnot that came to it and, and helped me, uh -huh. I just started making things for myself. You know, okay. A lot of the things that you'll see on our in our catalog and our collection are um, they're not like over the top Christian looking Bible thumping big. It's not Christianese. Yeah, no, a big bedazzled <laughs> cross on the side of it or nothing <laughs> like that because it was never meant for public consumption. Oh. So it's real kind of low key. You wouldn't know it unless you really looked at it. Okay. Um, so it was for you. All of it was just intended initially just for me. Yes, so sir. how did you get into making it a business? Um, friends, pastors, uh, the things that had helped me. Every time I would wear something out, everybody was always asking me about it, um, even at the times when I didn't really feel like talking because I'm not a very talkative <laughs> cat. <laughs> um, it, it, it gave me the opportunity to share, you know, share my experiences, you know, share the word and whatnot. So after it was all said and done, I, I, I couldn't keep it to myself after a certain point. If it helped me through some things, who's to say it couldn't help somebody else? You dig? Right. So, I mean, is it that you didn't want to wear clothing that you didn't know the meaning to it? Or, like, you don't, you know, you got into the Illuminati thing. It was like, everybody's Illuminati. Yeah, like, no. <laughs> no, I mean, to be honest with you, it was a, it was a matter of um, just personal preference. The things that I would see that were faith-based were just kind of cheesy. Oh, okay. Dig? And that's not to knock all of those brands out there because right. they all have a place. But um, the things that I saw... I really wouldn't have gotten down with so i just made things myself like i said it was just meant to be pretty vague ambiguous and only means something to me okay so it would just remind me like when i'm washing my hands in the mirror or something like that mm -hmm. of how i got through it and right then people would say you know how, where'd you get it where'd you get it right and so here we are today so what's some of the struggles you go through now owning your own company um i would imagine this is the day-to-day -day normal stuff um you know getting out there, getting your name out there, marketing, branding. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I'm by no means am I a fashion designer. I don't have that type of background. I'm not a graphic designer. I don't okay. have that background. Right. Um, so the struggles for me is just staying up to date, being available, exposure, marketing, stuff like that. You know what I mean? So right. that's, that's pretty much it. It's, it's something for my wife and my kids and myself. It's our thing. Okay. And at the end of the day, if I can leave it to them as a legacy, I'm all for it. Got it. So you're not trying to get rich off this clothing. Absolutely not. Absolutely. Not. I mean, here, Lord, don't listen to that. I'm, I'm not going to block none of it, you dig, but, um, that but no, that's not the, the main motivating right. factor by, by all means. I have a full-time job that, that provides for me and my family, so right, right. This, this isn't my, own, my sole means of income. Okay, so having this clothing line, who are you trying to, like, who are you trying to get to wear it? Is it, like, you trying to get rappers to wear it? You trying to get um, models to wear it or, you know, to get exposure? What do you, what do you think? Well, I mean, I would imagine all of the above. I don't, I don't think that, um, I don't think that faith is something that should be pigeonholed to just a certain, you know, genre of music or, or even a certain age bracket. Mm -hmm. um, if it speaks to you, you can rock it. Okay. You know what I mean? If it, if it means something to you, you can rock it. So if that means that, you know, Snoop want to get down with one or Bishop T D Jakes want to get down with one, mm -hmm. either way it goes, I'm all in. Okay. So 
when it comes to uh, what I'm saying is like um, your major exposure, are you trying to sponsor anybody? Do you want to put your clothes in on somebody that has a major platform that may drive more traffic to you? Sure, absolutely. I mean, things like that are always, like you said, the business, the day-to-day side yeah. of things. That would help with exposure, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, absolutely. I mean, is there anybody specific, not a person, but a genre specific that you would think um, you want to shoot I, into? Man, I, I love CHH. Okay. Um, so cats like Lecrae, yourself, you know what I mean? I've okay. seen you guys do these things at a very high level. And right. obviously, I'm a I'm a hip hop junkie from back in the day. Right. So that's probably always going to be where my main interest is going to lie. Okay. But I mean, everybody's important. You right. So you know, whoever shows an interest, if they want to do it, I'm all I'm all for it. But that CHH um, genre is, is pretty much kind of what it initially seemed like it would be aimed at. Okay. What did it um like? What did it start? What did it look like when you did your first shirt? Like what? If you can paint us a visual of what that process looked like when you first started and got your first logo, so to speak. Um, yeah, well, it, once again, so no, nothing is accidental or nothing really just ever happened. So if my logo, it looks like a, a tree with berries. It's colorful. Yes. Um, that was actually drawn by my daughter about, wow. gosh, she was about seven years old. Wow. Um, she, she was sitting, I picked her up from school and she grabbed my phone and said, daddy, I want to draw you a pretty flower. And I said, okay, you know, so I gave her my phone. She put, took the little pen out and she drew it and I saved it. And over the years, she would always ask me, Daddy, do you still have my flower? Do you still have my flower? And I'm like, yeah, baby, I still have it. So fast forward all these 15 years later, okay. it's now the logo for my company. Wow. So so to say that this is an accidental thing, it would have happened with it without me. I'm just trying to be obedient and, and, and stewarded well. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, everything kind of came about extremely organically. Nice. Yeah. So it was your daughter's absolutely painting or picture of the tree absolutely and that's what the logo is on the side of my hats and right. shirts and all that stuff absolutely now give us that scripture you know that scripture that uh matthew 7 16 through 17 um yeah well by your fruits you'll know them um and and that's really it the things that we do are supposed to leave my mom always told me leave the situation better than you found it mm-hmm. you know what i mean and i think that 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 which you leave behind whether it be material or just you know emotional motivational whatever you leave behind it should bear good fruit. It mm. should leave something better, whether it be a person or a place. It should leave that situation or place better than when you first arrived. Right. So that's that's the the underlying foundation of everything that we do. So now, who is Eddie to you? When you look at yourself in the mirror, you say, what? Who are you? <clears throat> so first, I want to be a loving father. I want to be a great husband, first and foremost. Um, I'm a, I'm a follower of Christ. Obviously that's, that's, um, that's a given, but I I just, I want to be viewed as somebody who's doing everything they can to expand the kingdom and also pour into his family. That's it. To be honest with you, everything else is going to take care of itself. It's Mm -hmm. outside of my control. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All I can do is everything that is put in front of me, do the best job with that, that I can, whether it be hats and shirts, whether it be my wife, whether it be kids, whether it be meeting good cats like you. I just want to steward all of those opportunities well. That's it. That's it. The rest, like I said, is going to take care of itself. What? And that, that was a great answer. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I think you are those things, and you want to excel in that, right, in those shoes, right? Absolutely. In my eyes, right? What drove you to be a Christian, a follower of Christ? Oh, so I'm a Net Times baby boy. <laughs> my mom wasn't having it. So um, – that's really what I was. I've been around it my entire life. My mom okay. is a is a faith filled woman. I'm strong, as, as strong a woman as you'll ever meet in your life. Um, provided for me and my sister very well. We didn't. Our dad wasn't around. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> the things that she instilled in us and the things that she pointed us to, mm-hmm. um, I just try to keep those things going in my life. So you were born that way. I was born into it. Yes, sir. Okay. Have you experimented outside of that? No. I mean, I've experimented in stupidity. If that, <laughs> if that counts, I think we all have at one point. But no, nah, I've, I've never gone outside of, uh, of the Christian Never faith. picked up a Kabbalah, never nah. picked up a Quran. No. Nah. Well, I mean, I've, I've seen those things. I've right. read some of those things. Okay. I, I've just and, and that's in an attempt to be, um, to understand people. You okay. know what I mean? Right. I, I think a lot of what, I mean, we, we can't build up walls and we can't be divisive because I, I want to understand you. If you're different, great. So let's see how we're different. And I guarantee we're, we're the same in more cases than we're different. Right. We're much more the same than we'll, we'll ever be different. Now, I don't care who they choose to pray to, who they choose to call God. Mm-hmm. We've got more similarities than differences. And I, and I would rather focus on those things, those similarities. And you keep showing the love. There's only so long somebody can love you and you keep hating back. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, that's so you're it. open-minded to other people and what they believe in. It's not my job to convert people. People don't save people. Clothes don't save people. God saves people. Nice. So all I'm supposed to do is point people to God. Yeah. And he'll take care. That's the heart. He'll do the heavy lifting. All I got to do is keep loving on folks. Right. That's it. How long you been married now? Oh, my gosh. We got married in 1999, man. It's, 99. it's coming up. Oh, my gosh, baby. Can you, if you're listening, I love you. Putting up with my boneheadedness and all of that good stuff. But, yes, yeah, it's, it's been the best. She's the best thing that happened to me. I'm this is your with God, my wife, Carrie. First yeah. married. Only married. Only married. She's Only my, married. Yeah, my girlfriend, my wife, and my baby mama all in one. Hey. <laughs> hey. I can dig that. Sure. So was this like high school sweetheart type of thing? I've known her since uh, eighth grade. Okay. I've known her since the eighth grade. Um, I won't bring up the dance story that she always Come hits on me now, in the bring rib. it, bring it, man. Come you know, on, you in the hot seat, brother. The, that was during the Bell Biv DeVoe era, hey. and I was out there cutting a the smooth Poison. rug, you dig? So <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> yeah, right? So, you know, we danced, and she was always a sweetheart. Obviously, she's beautiful. Um, and I, I worked at a grocery store that was up right up the street from her house. Yeah. And then she wound up coming and, and working at that same grocery store with me okay. all those years ago, and here we are. Wow. So, yeah. That's nice, man. Yeah, absolutely. Best thing that's ever happened to me. So um, being in the hot seat, man, I, I got to ask, like, what's one of the worst things you've done in marriage, bro? <sighs> talking without thinking first. Got it. Talking and acting without her feelings first. Mm. You know what I mean? Marriage is supposed to be selfless. Mm -hmm. um, and I think at all times we, we all lean to the selfish side of things. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the worst thing. I've You know, just... And obviously, incidents will come from that. Yeah. Hurt feelings, arguments, and things of that nature, but yeah. not thinking of the other person first right. before you speak or act. Right. I, that's always going to be something I'm going to work on for the rest of my life. So you're talking to <clears throat> approximately, you know, 2,000 listeners, right? Okay. You got somebody out there that's struggling in their marriage, specifically on the male end of the situation. He's just jacked up, man. He's just out here tripping. What do you tell that dude right now to get his his marriage back or get his wife back like how do you inspire him and encourage him <clears throat> um well first the first question is do you love him and do you want to stay with him i mean that that's where it's going to start you know what i mean people there's a lot of relationships that get that come to be because they feel like you know we've got a kid together or i've been with them for this long so first i want to know do you love them enough to work on yourself because you're not going to change them yeah if you love them enough to look in a mirror and grow that person yeah be the person that you would want to that you would want to be loved, if you can be that person, the rest is easy, man. Got it. The rest is easy. It takes a whole lot of effort to be bad. Yeah. To come in, smile, kiss somebody, and tell them that you love them, it's, it's actually a real easy thing. Yeah. And, and it's knee jerk. It's it's repetition. It's repetition. You, you, you've just got to you got to practice these things. You know what I mean? A man's actions will soon enough lead to that man's beliefs and thoughts. Right. So if you keep continually work on yourself and getting better and doing the right things, tell you tell them you love her. Right. You know, the rest of your body's going to follow. Your mind's going to follow. Got it. Right. So that's, that's it. good. That's if good. you love them enough to work on it, change yourself. Don't try to change them. That's good. Absolutely. You said you were raised by your mother only. Correct. Right. Any harbor feelings towards this missing father? Any issues you had <clears throat> dealt with growing up like that? Oh, wow. I see. Boy, you trying to get the Oprah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, no. First off, let me answer that question right off. No. Um, I, I never knew. You don't. You can't miss what you never knew. Got it. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I looked around at my friends, and, and I, I played sports my whole life. So, you know, because my mom was a single mom, she didn't really get a chance to make it to a lot of the things, mm. sporting events and yeah. whatnot, award shows and yep. all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would look around and I would see other cats with their dads and whatnot. And I'd, I'd be like, you know, man, that, that, that kind of sucks. So I went through that part of it. I looked as I got older, I saw what my mom had to go through working hard, working jobs, mm. money tight. So there was a certain amount of time when I, I might have resented for putting her through that. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I actually reached out to him some years ago. My sister okay. found him online. OK. And um, I, I called him out of the blue. Yeah. And um, so we're, we are back in contact. And that was the hey. first thing that he said. Um, he was like, I, I just figured that you'd hate me. And I'm like, man, I, listen, I wouldn't change the way that I was raised for anything. Yeah. Um, you, you had to choose a family. I'm, I'm glad you chose one. Right. Um, cause it's a lot of cats out there to just go run for the Hills and leave two people yeah. out in the woods, two yeah. sets of families out in the woods. Yeah. Right. Um, so at the end of the day, if you had those feelings and you went, at least you, at least you did th that correctly. You went over there and you took care of that. 
Right. So I, I don't have any kind of hard feelings for him. I just want you to know that I'm grown. I'm still alive. You got grandkids. Mm. Your, your son and your daughter on this side are doing well. Mm. Um, nobody here hates you. Mm. So if, if you want to pick it up and start from here moving forward, I, I'm absolutely all good with it. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do. That's amazing, though. You know what I mean? What did your mother, like, I know she instilled Christianity, right? Absolutely. But outside of that, what is the moral compass? Like, what did she teach you that sticks with you, the advice she gave you that sticks with you today that even you now carry on to your family? I mean, and it's going to sound simplistic, but, I mean, honestly, just keep working on yourself. The day you think you've arrived, whether it be in business, <laughs> whether it be in relationship, whether it be in intelligence, whatever it is, the day you think you've arrived and mm -hmm. I'm here and I'm great mm -hmm. is the day that you probably should realize that you're stupid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So my mom always instilled in us to keep growing, keep learning. Um, every time you get the opportunity to grow and learn something and make somebody else's life better, do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easy. You know, people looking for the meaning of life. It, listen, good luck. <laughs> you know, if you find yeah. it, you let me know. But um that's it's a very simple process right you know live like you would want to be lived love like you'd want to be loved and the rest is going to fall into place that's good word man that's good word um what are you teaching your kids at home what are you instilling i mean of course that right sure. christianity but as a man right in the father of the household you have a son and a daughter what are you driving home <clears throat> um be I, I want them to be committed commit yourself to something mm. you know what i'm saying so be happy find out what you want to do um my wife and i we we, we jump through hoops um my wife especially because i work so much okay. and she's um she's a stay-at-home mom she works a couple of days helps out in a couple of places but okay um we will do anything we will move heaven and earth for them to find out what they're interested in to start file to start moving those kind of i like it but i don't love it to find out what they want to do with their lives mm. and help them fulfill whatever dream they might want. My, my daughter's an artist. My son loves photography and video editing and whatnot. So I want them to find what they love yeah. and find a way to do what they love for the rest of their lives. Wow. Um, but that only comes with committing yourself to it. Yeah. So whatever you start, finish it. More often than not, kids nowadays, we live in this era where there's so many different distractions. Yeah. Um, PlayStations. I can't even front. If I had a PlayStation, when I, if that was how <laughs> I was little, I'd probably have my eyeballs stuck to it too. Right. It's dope, right? But Yo. um, I find something to commit yourself to. Don't get distracted from it and give it everything that you have. You'd be surprised how far you could go with it. Mm. But most of us never do that. As soon as it starts to get hard, we pull out and we back up and we, oh, I don't like that. It's not what I wanted. So yeah, I want them to commit, find something they love and commit. Right, right. Why the spelling G-U-D-F-R-U-T-Z? Uh, I'm a weirdo. I, <laughs> um, that's it. Just, to, I mean, real talk, just to be different. I mean, if you, if you, <laughs> so on the website, I, I bought all the domains. So if you spell it the normal way, G-O-O-D, then in the normal spelling, yeah. approves, you'll still get there. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll still get there, but um, I, I'm different. I mean, I'm, I, I've never, I've never been that traditional kind of, kind of dude and, and on any kind of level, let mm -hmm. alone just faith or whatever. I'm, I'm different. I'm always laughing. I'm always joking. Mm -hmm. um, so the spelling, it just was, I don't want to spell it G-O-O-D. Why not? Because I don't have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just yeah. put it out there like that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what type of Christian do you consider yourself to be? Like, you know, you got those, I'm just spiritual, right? Then you got those hellfire brimstones, right? <laughs> right? right. You got those, oh, it's all about the homeless and outreach. Sure. Right? And I'm not saying neither one is different or better than the other. Right. There's but a there's, place for everybody. Right. So what 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 section or so to speak would you put yourself in? Um well, I never thought about that. Um I, I guess a normal one. One one that <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a i I'm a twenty nineteen <laughs> Christian, I, I guess. Um but you can't you'll never see me or anybody I know standing outside with a with a a sign saying, you know, repent okay. or burn, turn or burn. Right. You know, uh, God hates gays and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not that type. I, I feel like if, if, you know, if, if love can bring them in. Mm. I, so a, one of my favorite quotes is by Mother Teresa back in the day. She said, uh, you know, show the love of God. Use words if you have to. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't got to be no Bible thumping preacher. I, I don't. All I got to do is love on people. That's the kind of Christian I want to be. Got so it. when the people that don't even know 
who I am. They can see from afar. Be like, man, that dude's so nice. I wonder what's going on with him. And in a world full of, especially right now, we, I don't think we've ever lived in a time that's been more divisive as a society. If if we can show people more of love as opposed to more reasons to avoid them, more as opposed to more reasons to hate, yeah. if I can show them love, the rest is really going to take care of itself. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? So I, I want to be nice where it draws people to us, draws people to the church, draws people to God. Yeah. And they make that decision, <clears throat> excuse me, that decision on them, on themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's, God can do it. It's not me. And that's the, that's the main thing that most people have to come to the conclusion of. I am not good enough. Got it. You know what I'm saying? So. No, I dig it. Yeah, that's it. I love it. And so when you look at a uh, good fruits hat company, right? 501c3 or business for profit? Uh, it's a business, right? It's a business for profit. Right. We, we send, um, we do sponsor a, a few charities out there, clothing, um, you know, Foursquare, a lot of things like that we're involved with. Yeah. Um, but once again, this is still kind of in the beginning types of things. And to be honest with you, I haven't even considered all those other things. I just knew everybody was saying you got to get a business license. Okay. So that's the route that I'm at now. Right. My wife and I have talked about things like that in the future. Mm -hmm. um, once we grow to that point, you know what I'm saying? Right yeah. now, we still give and, and tithe and whatnot just off of the regular income. But and yeah. we tithe off of all of this stuff. Yeah. 10 to 20 percent always goes to some type of charitable event. Yeah. And I, I ask because a, a lot of people that I know, um, they do it as a 501c3, you know, whether it be their music ministry or mm -hmm. their clothing ministry. Um, and very few people I, I know do it as a business mm -hmm. um, because it's like supposed to be a fine line sure. between that. Right. Um but I don't see anything wrong with money unless you love right. it more than God. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, money answereth all things. So when I look at uh, Good Fruits Hat Company, right, I still see ministry. Right. What is ministry to you? Uh, showing people God, showing people love. That's it. I, I think that the, all of the different ways that you can describe something, um, even when it's done with the best of intentions, Sometimes it thinks it makes people think that they're not included in whatever demographic that you're saying that you want to go to. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, that's it. I mean, that, that's 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 really it. Yeah. yeah. So there wasn't like at the table, we're going to do altar calls. We're going to have Bible tracks. We're going to do prayer. It just. It's so organic. Whatever happens at the table happens at the booth. Yeah, that's it. I mean, and we have we we've done all those things. Yeah. But um, but that's it. Ministry is is n nothing more than we're supposed to be arrows. So my ministry is all of these things that you can wear that you can have. Um, our motto is to you know wear your faith and spark kingdom conversations. Yes. Like people will come up out of the blue and and just ask questions about the hat, about the shirt. What does it mean? What is it? And that's an opportunity for you to start talking about, you know, the things that it that it means to yes. you and how it could help them and whatnot. So yes. um, I've never asked anyone to buy anything. Wow. I, I've never I've never asked anyone to do that. Um, and that's mainly because it, I'm not going to lie. A lot of it in the beginning was selfish. Okay. Like this stuff. It's like my diary. You know what I'm saying? So like it's it means so much to me. How could it mean anything to anybody else? Mm. You dig? So um when people start to come up and talk, it did give me that opportunity to just, you know, talk about what I believe in. Mm -hmm. Do you not, in a not weird kind of way. I hate some of that weird stuff, but yeah, not in a, no, <laughs> not in it. a weird kind of way. I feel it. Yeah. You create your own designs? I do. So you don't have a, do you have a designer you want to shout out? I, know. I, I don't. <laughs> my, my baby girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Yeah, that's, that, that's you were self-taught. Um, I, sh I guess. Yeah. I mean, I don't, if you look at a lot of this stuff, it's, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, people like it, like like the hat, the Braille hat. People are always constantly coming up asking, what does that mean? And you tell them, and they're like, oh, my gosh. Mm. So, I mean, Catholics, atheists have bought this stuff. What? Yeah, man. Tell me about that, that conversation. Um, we were at an event about a year ago, um, and this guy came up, and, you know, he was – he used to be involved in, in a church and whatnot and got burned. And, and unfortunately, um, offense is one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people, you know, step away, mm -hmm. which is understandable. But we just had a conversation and we were talking and he looked and he was like, man, that's kind of crazy. I don't believe in God anymore. You know, I'm, I believe in science and all of that stuff. Now it's like, all right, that's cool. You know, whatever, however you get down. And it's almost like he was expecting me to kind of brush him off and not give him the time of day. Got it. Um, but I was like, cool, you know. Listen, I mean, let's chop it up. You thirsty? I got some water over here. Let's just talk. Yeah. Um, and at the end of it all, he bought a shirt and a hat. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. 
I, I think there's in all of us to some degree, we're searching for something that we know deep down we can't provide. Mm -hmm. um, some people call it, I'm searching for the meaning of life. Some people are talking about, I'm trying to find myself. However you want to verbalize it, <laughs> right. there's something in you, a feeling, a need, a desire that you yourself cannot supply. Right. Another person cannot supply. Got it. Sooner or later, you're going to find out what that is. Yeah. Hopefully it's soon. I do want to get a commercial break. Dave, you got me on a commercial break, bro. You know what we're doing around here, man. I want to yep. shout out once again um, my people over there at Masterpiece Barber College right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Go over there, support the students so they can get their hours clocked up and learn how to cut some hair. So uh, we're going to do this good old commercial break and make it pop off. I will be back in a Ritz Cafe, specialized in serving southern style breakfast and lunch. From the crunchy catfish to the crispy chicken, you can't go wrong, especially when you get a grit bowl. Ritz Cafe, 1911 Stella Lake Drive, West Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. Open Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. for breakfast and lunch. Visit GritzCafe.com to get Trina's cooking tips and join the Grits Dining Club. That's G-R-I-T-Z-C-A-F-E.com. GritzCafe.com. 702-255-4748. Grits Cafe. You want a low-key barbershop offering haircuts for adults and children? Plus beard trims and a hot towel shave? Well, visit Unfatable Masters Barbershop. Located at 3231 North Decatur Boulevard, Suite 128. In Las Vegas, Nevada, 89130. Open Tuesdays through Sunday. Yes, Sunday. 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And on Sundays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. 702-636-9499. Visit umbarbershop.com. That's umbarbershop.com. Praised in the Review Journal as one out of the eight best places for barbecue in Las Vegas, TC's Barbecue Crib, 3655 South Durango Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89142. Open seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Order online at tcsbarbecuecrib.com. That's T-C-S-B-B-Q-C-R-I-B.com or call 702-451-RIBS. That's 702-451-7427. TC's Barbecue Crib. Good Fruits Hat Company, unique Christian faith-based hats and clothing for men, women, and children. Good Fruits Hat Company, you can wear your faith and spark kingdom conversation. Shop now, goodfruitshatco.com, G-U-D-F-R-U-T-Z-H-A-T-C-O.com, goodfruitshatco.com, Matthew 7, 16 through 17. Find their fruit, you will recognize them. Shop now, goodfruitshatco.com. Access College and Career Fair Spring into Vegas 2019. Tuesday, you know April 2nd, 2019. Oh, Session 1, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Clark High School in the gymnasium. 4921 Penwood Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89102. The second session will be held from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Western High School in the gymnasium. 4601 West Bonanza Road, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89107. What to expect? College representatives, career readiness opportunities, summer job recruiters, financial aid and scholarship info, workforce development, and free food and music at Session 2 and much more. Yo, Register now at accesscollege2.com. That's accesscollege, the number 2.5 FM. Hot7025FM.com. Make sure you get the Mix LR app and listen to our shows all day long. All right? So... In the hot seat, I got my brother Eddie, owner and founder of Good Fruits Hat Company. Yes, sir. Goodfruitshatco.com. Y'all heard the commercial. Yes, yes sir. he's an avid supporter of what I got going on. So, what's up, man? Ah, man, just enjoying this. I appreciate you, bro. Like, I, I appreciate you. 100. He, he knows me, and he knows that I don't really do a whole lot of talking. Yeah. And he's making this easy, so I appreciate you, fam. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Why is that? Like, what's your... Uh, deal with i guess public speaking is that what it is in in front of cameras like why yeah i mean i don't know i okay. mean at the end of the day there's no reason why we shouldn't be but i've just always been nervous to do it yeah always been nervous to do it yeah yeah so what, what you feeling like right now what's your what's your feelings right now give me um, your my my rundown right now um 
little sweaty palmed, but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make it. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be all right. I'm yeah, all man, right. it's worth it. It's for a good cause, and if if the reason why I'm doing it is more important than why I wouldn't do it, so uh, here, here we go. Absolutely, bro. So um, I, I enjoyed everything thoroughly, bro. Telling me about the company, like how it started. You know what I mean? And um, I I do want to ask though, because it was just for you and your family, right? Um. Is this something that you're leaving in the field for your children's children? Or does it is it not that serious? Is it something else you're leaving in, in the field for your children's children? So absolutely. Um, I, I, I'd like to leave it for them. Um, my other line of work, I'm, I'm a finance director at a, at a car dealership. Okay. Um, and I can't leave that to them. You know, every day I, I go to work and I build, I help build somebody else's dream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not, I, and I love them. Right. Shout out Cardinal Alleyway Accurate. It's a God first Christian owned place. Hey. Um, so. I, I love them. They're, they've been great for me, great to me, and great to my family. But I'm, at the end of the day, I'm I'm helping build Mr. Cardinale's dream. Mm-hmm. So I want something that my family can call their own. Okay, you know what I mean. We can get this to a point where it is kind of spreading the gospel globally, and that they can take it and run with. Um, I I love that because we are supposed to leave things for our children's children's children. Right. You know what I'm saying. Right. So. Um, yeah, an office in the back of a car dealership. I can't necessarily put in my will for my <laughs> for my kids. You know what I, I mean? It. So yeah, that's it. I feel it, absolutely. Um, what other businesses uh, on the side do you get yourself into? Uh, maybe they're connected to ministry. Maybe they're not. Is this the only thing? That's it. That's it. Did you ever think about being an entrepreneur? Um, never really gave it much thought. Wow. I mean, not not much. Probably any more thought than you know anybody else. At some point, it's almost cliche to say that I would love to start a business and work for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but the actual act of doing it it's hard man it's hard there's a lot involved so um i I, i've always had you know pretty good jobs so i've never really that thought hasn't ever really crossed my mind and that was also one of the reasons why it took so long to start this Mm -hmm. um because i i didn't never thought that that's what i could do or would do right but i mean once again when when something is outside of your control Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah Yeah. here we are you got just kind of got to be obedient how long has been running now good for um a little over three years now Yeah. Yeah. A little over three years now. Yeah. Um, what was the, the first year, right? What did that look like? Uh, you didn't have any idea, no idea whatsoever. So my wife and I, we've been, um, we've been trying to figure this stuff out as we go. Um, but just getting involved in local events, um, we're, we're really big on grassroots type of things, Mm -hmm. getting involved in the community, doing, you know, concerts will be there. Um, charitable events will be there things like that Mm -hmm. um so and then we started getting into the digital side of things websites and instagrams and man it it is absolutely bananas how big (laughs) social media is you know what i mean and i can say that as a 42 year old cat yeah i didn't grow up with stuff like that right so the fact that you can post a picture and come back in an hour and 3500 people have seen it and clicked on a like button or something like that that's absolutely bonkers to me but you know i'll take it right i'll take it that's just the times that we live in right so we have social media, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> would you rather it be social media or would you rather it be boots on the ground? Um, they, they, me personally, which, which do I yes. prefer? I always prefer boots on the ground. I, I, I want to shake a hand. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, so there, and we're not by any means saying that social media doesn't work or right. it's not in no, there. No, not you, at all. I, we've it. seen, I mean, insane insane results and in, in, in benefit from Correct. social media but um, I, I'm always at the end of the day supposed to pour into people you know what I mean so if, if I can meet someone face to face shake their hand and maybe help them through something you know what I'm saying that's always going to be the first love for, for all of us but obviously you can't be in more than one place at one time No. and on the internet you can you can yeah. be everywhere at the same time so you, you got to do both it. you, you really got to do both it. Yeah, man I can dig that, bro. Is there um, something that you want to tell that entrepreneur out there? Got a family, bro. You know, he want to start something. Inspire him, bro. Encourage him. Tell him something. Uh, do it. It's, it's better to start now and perfect it along the way. I think most times when people have some type of an idea that they want to do, they try to perfect it before they put it out there. They will... Um, you know, be paralyzed, call it analysis paralysis. You know mm. what I'm saying? Overlooking and looking again yep. and looking again because they're trying to get it perfect. Yeah. I think that's that's not necessary. If you have an idea, you feel like something that is inside of you that you need to get out and you want to do it, do it. It's rather to, it's better to be present than perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, be available. Mm-hmm. You can fix it along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And the best thing you can do is fail. So many people are, especially men, 
we're, we're, we're caught up in this, I can't fail, I can't fail. The best thing you can ever do in life is fail. Otherwise, you don't know what to stop doing. Knowing what not to do, in my opinion, is just as important as knowing what to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, fail. Get out there and fail as soon as you can. Right. Then you can cross that off the list. The next time you do it, you're automatically better. Yep. This is amazing. So for me, um, having my own brand, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I really see a lot of what I've been through and, and, and what I go through, you know, through what you're saying. It's kind of like, a mirror image you know i'm like wow this is what i go through you know i just don't get a chance to talk to nobody about these things (laughs) you know what i'm saying absolutely it's amazing but what 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 i like the best about it is that your wife is 100 percent in was this your idea and then she jumped on with you or was it something you guys discussed together and then you went out together um so i i I married the most um supportive um encouraging woman on the face of the earth right she's um she's been with me through good through bad she would see obviously whenever i'd have these hats and or shirts or what have you she would see the response that we would always get when we were out and about um and she would say you know the day you want to do it i'm in Mm. and just left it at that she never harped on it she never um you know said well how come you ain't doing Mm. it was never that it was i think you know there's something there Mm -hmm. and i'm ready when you are yeah you know what i mean and then she she's the one that i i, I have the the propensity to to play the back to kind of oh i got to get it perfect first yeah that's me by nature yeah she's the one that is let's go you know she'll lead the charge with me and she pulled a lot of things forward and a lot of things out of me um because i was like i knew that the the, the failure or whatever did land on my shoulders and sometimes that can that that can be pressure it can be viewed as pressure you know so, but she's she's great. She's been and in. She today. helps you with that From situation, bro. Yeah. I love yeah. the uh, togetherness in, in marriages and couples when they go together and do something. Yeah, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Um, your wife uh, is she mixed or is she? A she she's half Mexican and half Italian. Okay. So I don't mess up. I right. Get, I get stabbed. Right. I get shot. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> no, nah, she's a sweetheart. But yeah, she she's half Hispanic and half uh, Italian. Okay interracial dating mm-hmm. right do you guys get looked at weird do people uh, look at y'all crazy yeah I'm, I'm sure i'm sure you don't notice it or i don't well i don't i just don't care i mean right. i yeah you, you're gonna notice okay obviously I, I don't i don't subscribe to the to the belief that i hear people say i don't see color and, and whatnot I, I think that's we're supposed to see color <laughs> you know Talk what i'm about saying it. we're supposed yeah. to see color I, yeah. I think that color shouldn't keep us from treating people good that, you know what i'm saying so yeah. to say that i don't see it is a lie god made us different for a reason right and if for you to say you don't see it he didn't make no mistake on your eyes yeah so loving through those differences is what we're supposed to do right and at the end of the day i mean if you don't like seeing different colors walking around you might want to dig a hole and live in a cave because that's just yeah. the way things are these days. You yeah. know? And I, not to knock people that want to, you know, only date within their race, mm-hmm. more power to you. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have any kind of problem with that either. Mm-hmm. Just, um, you know, just don't knock my hustle. I love my wife. Yeah. You know, and you're still unapologetically black. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. So what do you think, man? Um, how do you think that we as black men can help our community with other black men? Not only with the Mary Wing your race situation, um, but cops killing us, right? Letting it be Absolutely. known that it's okay to date outside your race because love is love, For right? Real. Yeah. Right? Then the Christian not like be harping on other gay men and all this other stuff, right? Like you said. Sure. Right? Uh, every cop isn't a cop, I mean, a killer. I got some our, real good friends that are cops, yeah. Right? Absolutely. And then us with this black on black crime right every black person isn't out to kill another black person every black man isn't is not a gangster you know how do we help our community bro like let's just say it's me and you like what are some ideas that you can actually get this message out like a platform like this of course but give me some so i I think um so all all of that you know racial tension animosity and whatnot that's something that's built up over a number of years so to think that it's going to be gone tomorrow um, that's not the case. It's something that's so embedded in our society that it's not just going to go away. So advice that I give, and to be honest with you, to black men, to white men, Mexican men, whatever the case may be, um, take care of your house. Fix your house. 
love your wife, teach your children what's right, teach your children what to say and what not to say. If everybody did that and took care of their own family and raised their family up the right way, people walk outside and are equipped to live life together. Mm. So you can get, I could give a speech at halftime of the Super Bowl trying mm -hmm. to fix other people, but if I'm not fixing my own kids and loving on my own family and teaching them the right way, what good does it do? Right. So take care of home. Teach your kids what's right. When they leave, they're, they're outside of your, you know, outside of your supervision more than they're with you these days at school, work, and whatnot. So you just got to hope that the voice inside of them is louder than the voice that's outside of them. Mm. That, that's it. Just default to love. That's it. Default to love. If you don't understand it, that's fine. We're not supposed to understand everything. Yeah. We don't know everything. Yeah. But if your default is it's different equals bad and not it's different. Wow, that's cool. Let me learn something. That's where the problem starts. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem starts. Having um, mixed children, have they ever been through situations that come home like? Yeah, you know? absolutely. So my, my daughter is of working age now, um, and she's had a few incidents. Um, but, I mean, once again, it's there's nothing you can do to control other people. There's nothing you can do to, to save other people. There's, there's control nothing your you response. can do. Man, just understand that this is how you react in those types of situations. Always stick up for yourself. We're not a doormat, but you make sure that in, in love, you can walk away. Mm. Understand that they're doing it because that's who they are. It, it doesn't matter what people call you. It's, it's who you respond to. They mm. can call you anything, yeah. but it's about who, what, what do you respond to? Yeah. If somebody call you a B.I., whatever, yeah. and you say, hey, I'll, I'm over here, then you just classified yourself, and that's on you more than it is them. Right. You dig? So, um, yeah, live your life. Be strong on the inside, and because and, what's inside of you is stronger than anything that could ever come against you. You dig? Man, you got some wisdom to be 42 <laughs> around here, man. Good fruit around here, man. <laughs> hey, brother. One time, though, you should not uh, you have any sweaty palms or any Ooh, nerves, bro. Uh, you stop got the stop the madness. The vocals. Stop <laughs> the madness. You got it, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. Like, like I said, like I said, man. It's it's a. I've I've seen you do your thing for a, a whole lot of years, and I'm 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 proud of you. I'm honored you. to be sitting in this room with you, doing Thank what you, you do. Yeah, uh, and keep it up, fam. Yeah, you my first interview, bro. I wouldn't want nobody else to be sitting in that seat for my oh, first that's, interview that's right what's here. Up. That's what's like. Up. You have not stumbled, you have not stuttered, you have not showed me any signs of tensity. Like, you comfortable, bro. So it's okay, man. It's good. Right. I'm going to take your word for it. Appreciate it. Hey, It was listen. awesome. So um, I always ask this question. What was your butt guy situation? Like, what was the most, maybe it was a horrific thing, or maybe it was a... <clears throat> a I don't know what, what happened where you could say that was a butt guy situation if nobody else, bro. <laughs> yeah, so um, it, it's still a little hard to talk about. But um, so some years back, I had a kind of like a, a health issue. My, my job changed insurance providers. And um, in doing so, we had to change our primary health, you know, our primary care physicians. So went in for normal routine checkups and whatnot, um, went in, they, they um, you know, took all the tests and whatnot, and they were saying, like, all right, well, we just need to send you down here for one more test. Never told me what it was, but they heard a little something different when they were listening to my heart mm. and said, you need to go down here and see this place. So I went and saw it, um, and it turns out that they gave me, uh, give you the Reader's Digest version of it, the, <laughs> a not-so-good diagnosis, mm -hmm. right? Um, that progressively got a little worse mm. and a little worse and mm. a little worse, um, worse to the point where um, I was about, I was getting scheduled for, a, you know, either a, a pacemaker or a heart transplant, something wow. like that. It was, it was kind of crazy. So wow. um, you were like, so, what, in your late thirties? Yeah, man. And this is when I was in the, I was in the best shape of my life, you know, wow. 215 pounds, 4% body fat. I thought I was doing some things. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. now all of a sudden here I go to these doctor's visits, walking in the rooms with people that have smoked their entire lives. Yeah. And, you know, so, um, so my butt God situation was um, a whole lot of folk praying for me, a whole lot of folks supporting me, a whole lot of people believing um, that what the doctor said wasn't the final say, you dig? So um, fast forward about a year and a half, two years into it, um, I go in for another checkup and it was gone. 
no trace, no sign, no nothing. <laughs> so, um, I, I'm I'm in a I'm in the medical book because yes. they couldn't figure it out. What? So, I, like, mm. yeah, but God, ain't nobody but God what? gonna do some stuff like that. You dig? So, um, yeah, it, it's a lot more to it that I, you ain't got enough time and enough tissues in here for me to be crying all over the place. But, um, yeah. So actually, I have a I, like I said, this stuff is my diary. So I have a hat. Um, that has hallelujah written on the front in Hebrew. Yeah. Um, because that's it. You know, I, I was talking to my mom, talking to my wife and, um, you know, they were like, no matter what you're going to pray, you're going, you're going to get through this and you yeah. know, who's going to get you through this. Yeah. So no matter what you're going to rejoice right. period end of discussion, you right. know, you'll have an alternative. There is no plan B. So that's what I decided to do. And that's what I chose to do. And it's hard, man. Everybody say they want to have faith. You know, I'll, I'll pray for somebody else's son or daughter or their husband or, yeah. or wife that, you know, might have a sickness. And it's easy to do that. Yeah. But when when God tapped you on the shoulder and say, OK, I know you say you got faith. Show me your turn. Yeah. Um, it's a whole nother. That's a whole nother ball game, man. You dig? So um, that's mine. I mean, I was just tons more. But that is the one that I feel like I'm playing extra innings every day I wake up. You dig? Right. No doubt. Why do you think it is hard to do for self than it is to do for others? Because uh, it takes a different level of belief. It takes a completely different level of belief to know that he can do it for me. And I believe that he is going to do it for me. It's easy. You can have doubt and pray for somebody else because, you know, it doesn't affect you. Oh, wow. You dig when you know that this prayer is God, you got a little bit more skin in the game <laughs> because it's me. Yeah, it's different. You know, yeah, it's different. And, and I always have. have I don't want to be that fake guy. Like when you asked me earlier, what kind of Christian yep, are you? Like, yep. I mean, I just pray to God that I am not a fake one. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's not what I want. And we, I make mistakes. Lord knows I make so many mistakes, yeah. but I, I want to be the guy that if somebody's standing on the outside looking at me, he can say, ah, man, I don't know how he got through it. I better go find out, man, that was crazy. And yeah. you're still up. Yeah. You dig? So yeah. then when that opportunity, when that person's standing in front of me, I can direct them to what got me through it. Turn that test into a testimony. Come on. Come Turn on. that mess into a message. Listen, tabernacle. You better say that. Are you looking at being a pastor of a flock, Ooh, a no. building, I a venue? I am pastor of my family. <laughs> no? That, that is it. There's, there's nothing in me that wants to be a pastor. If that's, God. that's not to say that we're not, we don't all have a, a purpose. Yeah. Um, I just don't think that's my calling. And I think I've seen a lot of people get out there because they see the platform and they see the mm. attention that that platform gets mm. and they want that more so than they want it. They want that mantle more so than they want the burden. Mm. And usually that burden is way too big unless you've been called to do it deep. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's not me. But if God called you, you say you have to wrestle with him, get you a little, uh, a hip replacement. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. We have to, that'd be a long discussion. Um, I always tell people, God, <laughs> I hear God's voice different. Like God in my head sound like big boy from outcast. Okay. <laughs> so he talked to me a little different than he, than he talked to most, but yeah, yeah I, I couldn't, um, nah, I, I don't see that in the future. Obviously mm -hmm. never, nothing's ever ruled out completely because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that, but um, yeah, that's not my intention by no means my intention. Okay. What's a prophecy that happened that, that was spoke to you that, that came to pass. And, and this is my last question because we have three minutes left. <laughs> ironically enough that I was going to start a business. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That, as crazy as that is, absolutely. That I was going to start a business. How long ago was that? This was about five years ago. And did you just pass it off? Um, no. I mean, in, in the moment. You received I, it? Yeah, I received it okay. because I didn't, I, I'm never going to, you know, I, I always want to be open to anything because yeah. I don't want to miss it. I, a lot of people say, oh, give me, Give me, you know, expand my kingdom. Give me, enlarge my territory. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't necessarily say that anymore. I always yeah. say, just help me recognize every opportunity that, that's already in front of me. Right. I, I don't want more until I'm getting everything that I can out of what I have. Got it. Let me exhaust that before I start to do anything else. Yeah. You did, because then you're not going to do it to the best of your abilities. Tell them where to go um, to, to your website. So you can go to uh, goodfruitshatco.com. That's G-U-D-F-R-U-T-Z hatco.com. Um, you can catch us on Instagram at Good Fruits Hats, Facebook, same thing at Good Fruits Hats. Um, appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Um, last thing you want to tell anybody, tell the, tell the public. Uh, baby, I love you, kids. I love y'all. Uh, mama, what's going down? Yeah. Um, we just want to tell the city, it. man, city of Las Vegas. Uh, we getting better. 
We're getting better. Vegas we're, we're, stronger. We're, we're getting better. Vegas strong, I think, was one of the things that, that showed how when a, a community can come together, what can be accomplished. Absolutely. All right, you guys have tuned in to Icy Jones. This is Hot Seat with Icy Jones on Hot7025FM.com. Make sure you get the MixLR app. Make sure to follow us on Facebook at Hot702.5 FM. Make sure to get at me, Icy, J-O-N-E-Z, on all social media platforms. Love y'all. God bless y'all. Peace. We out. Nobody but God.